welcome back to the Goff House. If you've been here before, if you're new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Jenny and today I am canning up some tomato sauce. This video is brought to you by Pure Mason Jars. I want to personally thank the Pure Mason Jar Company for sending me these jars. I absolutely love them. I'm going to be canning up some tomato sauce in my largemouth pure jars. If you've seen any of my videos, I've been canning a lot with these Pure Mason Jars. I absolutely love them. And today, I'm going to show you how to make tomato sauce from start to finish. This is a beginner video, so if you are just starting your canning journey, this video is for you. Or if your skills might be a little bit rusty because you haven't canned in a little while, this video is also for you. Let's get started. First step, the first thing that we want to do is get our hot soapy water going. And I always like to add a little bit of white vinegar to the water. Okay, folks. First thing you're going to want to do is to open up your jars and check them. You always want to check for any cracks, chips, make sure you check your rims, run your finger across for cracks, for chips. Um, the jars are in good condition, they go in your hot soapy water. I always make sure I put a little bit of vinegar in there. I am opening up brand new jars and I just want to show you um, pure jar packaging. I love that they put the dividers in the middle. Not all jar companies do that, and then your, your jars kind of knock around. These are prepackaged, so they can't knock around. I absolutely love them. Now, I like my jars to soak in very hot, soapy water with vinegar for 15 minutes. Then, when I'm ready to wash my jars, make sure you get a really good wash. Make sure you get the inside. I use a rubber spatula for the inside of my jars. I don't have a bottle brush. Um, even the bottle brushes, though, have a little metal in them. You want to be careful with your jars. Um, be gentle with them. Vinegar removes everything extra that could be soap residue um, off of your jars. And then we give them a good rinse. And put them on the towel to dry. Next thing I'd like to do is get my canner ready. So my canner is full of water. I'm just gonna let it sit right there, ready to go. Next thing I like to do is get my tomatoes ready to go. If you purchase your tomatoes from a store, you get a good deal on them. They come with a wax coating on them. You need to get this off. So I'm gonna soak these in some water with a, a little bit of cold water with a little bit of white vinegar for 10 minutes and then give them a good uh, scrub down with my little vegetable sponge. If you've pulled a whole bunch out of your own garden and it's organic, you know, just give them a, a good rinse and a scrub and you're ready to go. All right, after my tomatoes soak, I just take a little sponge and I have a cute little smiley face dedicated to fruits and vegetables. <laughs> and I just kind of run it across a little bit, give it a rinse, put it in a dish. You can put these in a strainer and rinse them all at once, however you want to do it. Put them, have a bowl of cold water. Next step, I've got a bowl here with some ice water. I've got my clean tomatoes and then I've got another bowl over here that I am just putting my tomatoes in. I am coring my tomatoes. Just give them a quick core very carefully. And then a quick X on the bottom of the tomato and I'm going to plop it into a bowl. This helps when we put them in the boiling water. Um, it will help the peels start curling up. So I like to put them in the boiling water for 30 seconds. And then I pull them out and we put them right into the ice water and you'll see the peels start coming right up and it makes it a heck of a lot easier. And we are ready to roll. Tomatoes are cored and X'd and I am ready to go. Water is boiling. <laughs> Load some tomatoes on your big spider ladle there and get them in. 30 seconds is up. I'm going to start pulling them out. You can see the peels start coming right away. And they come right over to our ice bath. The skin should be easy just to peel right off. And there you go, a perfectly peeled tomato. I am just finishing up peeling the last batch of tomatoes. And I have my stock pot full. Hot tomatoes. <laughs> so I'm just slicing them in half and popping them in just like I was doing 
just like when I did the tomato video, uh, except we're going to turn these into sauce by milling them down when they're done. This is just a little bit easier. You can leave the skin on and just cook them till they burst. If you've got grape tomatoes or cherry tomatoes, making um, sauce with those is wonderful. You can just wash them up and pop them in. But today we are doing plum tomatoes. And I'm just gonna cut them in half to cook them down. This one's a little bit more of a process, but definitely worth it. I am going to add two cups of water into this big pot. I'm going to turn it on a medium high. I'm going to cover it. And I'm going to start cooking it down. This is going to take about 30 minutes, this part of it. And as soon as they've cooked down a little bit and are soft and ready for the mill, we're going to go ahead and put them through the mill. Our tomatoes have cooked down and look like this. I let them go for a smidge longer, so about 45 minutes. Um, I am now going to take them and put them right through my food mill. On my food mill, I just have uh, the smallest mesh screen. There are so many different food mills available or Victorios. Um, if you don't have a food mill, you can surely use your food processor or you can use um, an immersion blender, whatever you've got. I like to use the small screen so that no seeds will pass through. Give you a closer look into the steamy situation. Now keep in mind, freshly milled tomatoes are gonna to be very watery. So you can see how watery the freshly milled tomatoes are. I'm gonna finish milling all of the tomatoes and then I'm gonna put them back into the pan. Hey, I have finished milling the sauce and just poured it back into my big pan and I am gonna go ahead and turn my heat up to a medium. I wanna bring this to a low boil, and I'm gonna let it do that for about 20 minutes or until my sauce gets as thick as I want it to. It may take longer. Um, it can take anywhere from 20 minutes to a couple hours, depending on how much water you have left in there and how thick you want your tomato sauce. You don't want it too awfully thick. You, want, you do want it pourable. This is about 20 pounds of tomatoes. Okay, my canner is full. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my heat on. I'm gonna turn it on a low. I just wanna bring this up to a simmer and I'm gonna simmer these jars 20 minutes. Canning tomato sauce is the easiest thing once you get this far. I am going to just fill these jars. I've got my half teaspoon of citric acid and you're gonna to wanna to put a half teaspoon of citric acid in quarts of tomato sauce, or if you're gonna do half pints, you're gonna do a quarter of a teaspoon. Or you can do two tablespoons of bottled lemon juice in your quart jars, and you can do one tablespoon in your pint jars, depending on how you want it. My sauce is a little bit thinner. I don't make it super thick. I like it a little bit thinner because I usually use this in soup. Plus, sometimes I like to just make a sauce and I want to make, I want to chop everything up and I want to put it in there and I want to simmer it for a little while. Um, so having it a little bit thinner like this helps with that. I'm then just going to put some um, basil leaves in there. Just, I've got three basil leaves. I'm going to leave quarter inch head space. Set 
So quarter inch headspace is there. I'm not quite there yet. That is quarter inch. I have got a clean rag. I am going to wipe my rims and the, this rag is, is damp. Just some water. I've got my pure lid. I did not soak them. Put my band on, fingertip tight. Hopefully you can see that. I probably, probably got that in your way. Okay, I'll put my half teaspoon of citric acid in first, and I'm gonna put some basil leaves in, just so my sauce pushes them down. Now, putting the basil leaves in will just lightly scent your sauce with basil. This is not something you have to do, that is optional. Or you could put in some fresh oregano if you like. You could put in a sprig of thyme. A little bit of herb is not gonna change your canning time. Or acidity level for that matter for this. Check our headspace. Make sure you debubble. Sauces, you don't have to really debubble a lot. They're pretty thin. As I mentioned, I am canning with the pure lids, the pure wide mouth canning lids. Fingertip tight there. Our citric acid, couple sprigs of basil. It smells so good in here. Oh, as soon as this hot sauce hits the basil, oh my gosh. There is nothing like canning your own tomato sauce. You can can pasta sauce and things like that, um, but just know once you start getting into that, you start getting into pressure canning, and eventually we are gonna do that. But for now, this is the this way is so much more simple. You can also put salt in here. That's your other option. I am doing mine unsalted. That way when I open up my jar and I'm going to use it for something, I can control how much salt I have in it. If you'd like to put some salt in your sauce, you could do a half a teaspoon. I don't know that I'd go much beyond a half a teaspoon. When you are simmering your sauce, you can simmer it and you can simmer it reducing it down by a third, which is what I did, and it's a little bit thinner of a sauce, or you could reduce it by half for a thick sauce, depending on how you like it. I think that needs 
just a smidgen more. A little bit more. Now, if I have some left and it doesn't fit in the jar, it's getting turned into tomato soup. Hurt my feelings. <laughs> and that would be for dinner. your cloth. It'll dip right into the sauce. <laughs> Wash some more basil real quick. Yeah, I'll make. Maybe I got enough here. Two more jars. You know, also, there's so many good reasons to can your own products. You know, growing things in your garden, but the biggest being you know what's in your product. You don't have that tin taste. Plus, you can flavor your products any way you like to. That's what I love about it. Fresh sauce canned the way you like it. And if you're growing your own stuff in your garden, you know there's no pesticides, you know how you grew it. There's a million reasons why. Sometimes when you get end of season, there is so much produce and overabundance that you don't always know what to do with it. This is a great way, and I'll tell you what, I can think of a gazillion uses for to plain tomato sauce, as well as plain tomatoes. into the canner. Tis a very full canner. Okay, everybody's in the hot tub. I'm gonna put the lid on. I'm going to turn up the heat. I'm not gonna turn it all the way up because it will cause overflowage. 
I'm going to bring this up to heat per the USDA guidelines. It states that our quartz should be canned. Our quartz should be processed for 40 minutes. I am at 11,000 feet, so I'm going to add my five minutes accordingly. I'm going to process these quartz 45 minutes. Make sure that you adjust the time for your altitude. I turned my canner off five minutes ago. I'm going to pull these guys up. I'm going to let these guys hang out here for five minutes. I'm going to start my timer and time this process. Okay, I am going to take these guys out of the canner. Look how gorgeous. And I did not put vinegar in them, so they've got the white on the top, but that's okay because we just clean them in some um, dish water with vinegar. All right, and there they are. They are all pinging away and sealing. Okay, it is the next morning, and I just wanted to bring you along for the next day to let you know that all of my jars are sealed perfectly. Um, I have had some questions on uh, pure jars and about people saying that their lids are not sealing. Now, I want to also point out that Pure has come out with boxes of canning lids and they are BPA free. Also, they have changed the compound, so it is now orange. Um, and it, when it comes on the jars, it's so the new, I guess if you purchase the old ones, I don't know if the new ones come with white on them yet or if they have this one on, this lid on them. But they are calling these their next generation lids. Anyway, they seal perfectly. I have had no failures. Okay, they are all sealed. Oops. Okay, they are all sealed perfectly. These lids seem to have the same amount of compound as the ball and cur. What I like about these lids is they actually have a little bit more of a lip on them than the other ones. But all sealed perfectly. And look how gorgeous, if I do say so myself. You can see the basil in there. Gorgeous. All right, that's all there is to canning up tomato sauce. So much better when you make it homemade. You know what's in it. There are no preservatives, no extra added salt, and boy, does your house smell delicious while you're canning it up. I will leave the Pure Mason Jar Company link in the description box below if you are interested. You can also get them at your local Ace Hardware. And don't forget, as of June 1st, packages of lids are available. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. It really helps me out a lot, and I sure do appreciate your support. You can find me on Instagram at JennyGoff18. I'm also on Facebook, and you can visit my blog at JennyGoff.com for all of my recipes. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.